Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Trivet Knots. I'm John. So this is the next episode of We're Not Talking, and it's featuring a conversation with Wendy Chin. If you're not familiar with Wendy, stay tuned, you're getting ready to be. Before I get into the conversation, let me show you some of her work. It's pretty amazing. So without further ado, on to the conversation. Well, hey, Wendy, welcome to We're Not Talking. Hey, we, but we are talking. We Hi, are John. talking. Hey. <laughs> so how has your week been? Um, it's been really good. Uh, I'm pretty busy. And um, as you might know, I do this full time. Um, I feel very, I have a lot of gratitude for um, getting to tie knots every day, all day long kind of thing. So I make fine art uh, out of knotting. Knotting is the language that I use. And yeah, we're having a good time. That's awesome. Um, got your book. Can you see it? There? We got your book. Thank you. Unlike many books, it has great pictures. <laughs> books oh. of its books of its type. Good job on that. I've found some stuff in here that I actually made some notes on. What in the heck is that? <laughs> you said note. like which part? Um, I'll show you in a second. Well, when if you go to the back where there's the list of the whole doggone kitten caboodle of them, right? There was a really cool looking. It's um. It's double ring bolt hitching. So I can't see it and show you at the same time. Right there. Oh, double ring bolt hitching. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. looks spiral. That's really cool. Yeah. You know, there's some knots, especially the, the ones that involve a lot of um, repetition, you know, in them. It's yeah. a little bit of an algorithm or a pattern. Um, those knots will naturally spiral just because of the nature of like where the, the turns are or yeah. whatever. Um, and when you make them around a ring as opposed to a straight post, then they want to spiral even more. And so those are the things that you kind of only learn once you start doing them, which yeah. is kind of the magic and joy of, of what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's the truth. You can uh, get the idea from the book learn to do it from a book or from a YouTube tutorial, what have you. But by until you do it, you're not really learning it because it's so three-dimensional and so tactile, you know, tell us okay. about your three lives. 
Oh, sure. Um, so I am 54 years old. So I've had, I've lived long enough to have had a few lives. Um, I was in the music industry for 14 years in the nineties. I owned a record store. I booked bands. I organized festivals, that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, with my music knowledge, I joined iTunes in the early years of, of Apple, you know, having the iTunes store back when it was 99 cents a song. And then and, um, you know, I worked at Apple for almost a decade and my last job there, I was the managing editor of the app store. So once we released iPhone, it became all about apps. Mm -hmm. so I did that. And then I left my job. I quit my job in 2013 and I didn't know what I wanted to do next, but I knew that I wanted to make tactile work with my hands, really tired of being in front of a computer. Mm -hmm. So um, after a couple of years of trying a lot of things. You know, I was on a very intentional creative search. Um, I found nodding. I took a, I took a refresher macrame class. My mom had taught me in the seventies, but I couldn't remember how to get started. So I take this refresher class and within five minutes, I fell so deeply in love with the, 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 the process of nodding and the repetitive motion and how it puts you into the flow state. And I just loved it so much that I went very deep, very quickly. And now I get to do this all the time. It's wonderful. I was having a discussion with uh, my buddy, Skip. You can probably, well, to our best uh, assumption on this, you can probably count the people who do what we do, make knots artistically for a living on one hand. I agree. You not know? I mean, there's simply not too many. Um, we were trying to go down a list where, you know, you were toward the top of the list. And uh, there's a guy, there's an IGKT guy. I don't know his name. Skip couldn't remember his name. He makes um, <laughs> it, it, uh, like uh, bondage ropes and whips and stuff out of um bamboo line that's really soft and he makes a very good living at it but i i i, get, I don't i don't know who he is but i know that he goes to igkt meets and is well known for being a very successful guy in his own little niche i don't know anyone that does those out of bamboo but another person i'm thinking of that does this uh, i believe full time is jd lenzen do you have any of his books I'm, i actually uh i don't have it well no, I've looked at some of his stuff online. I actually reached out to JD a couple of weeks ago, not, 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 right around the time that I reached out to you. And uh, he just hit me back last week and said, yeah, man, I'll come on your show. Like, awesome. That's wonderful. I remember the first thing that caught my eye on his was that obviously he was artistic because he was at that time, and I think he still does, post some of the, the stones, the rocks, really beautiful work. Yeah, he's a really great guy. And, you know, he sets such a good example for um, uh, uh, for having an original voice. Like he's invented a lot of different types of yeah. um, kind of like different Turks heads and different kinds of doing braids and sinnets mm -hmm. um, and and shares that with the world. He's so wonderful. He's that's, here. That's in San great. Too. Yeah, he's, he's in San Francisco as well. Yeah, yeah, we've okay. met it up a couple of times. Yeah, awesome. That's wonderful. It, well, it's, you know, it's really good to have somebody that's nearby. That's another person that you can talk shop with. Oh, you know. I know. You know, I'm so excited. I'm going to Denver this winter to do a 200 foot long rope wall at the um, at the Denver airport. And cool. the thing that I'm most excited about is because I need some assistance for it. So I'm going to um, look up Mark Barsacchini, you ah, know, who, yeah. I think the head of the North American chapter. Of, I think I, so. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to look him up and uh, see if he wants to help me out on this one. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I reached out to there. Let's. I think there are eight people within uh, an hour's drive of me that are IGKT or you know not tires of note that I have kind of found you know in my travels on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and we're gonna uh, actually reach out to because I'm, I'm on for what it's worth. Um, I'm on the executive committee of the International Guild of Knot Tires. And so I have some resources and I just reached out to the secretary, uh, Jim Wolf, and said, what do we need to do to like, I'm not trying to form a chapter, but it's just a little local group. And I want to, you know, it's IGKT people. And, you know, what do I need to do? He said, just let us know. That's about it. 
<laughs> write down some names if you want to. It's very I informal. John. I love that you're because our what our community really needs is is more community, right? And so you're just performing this like really essential um, role, volunteering to help bring people together, and that's so great. Well, it's it's a tremendous amount of fun, and you know I talk to Skip Hips on the phone almost well, probably once a day, sometimes twice a day, because he's the only one that I can reach out to. I know because he's another old single guy. <laughs> he's not going to be bothered with, you know, uh, for me to call him and uh, just to talk shop because he's one of the few people that would understand what my uh, issue is that I'm going through or just to call in frustration with I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And we've come up with some really neat ideas and, and things that that we are sharing with others as well. I bet you have. That's great. Yeah, I have a friend like that. He's um we met, he's a he's a boat captain and he takes he charters for small groups all across the world, mostly the Mediterranean. Um, and we really bonded over our love of knots. So he joined the guild and he and I have been recording um podcast episodes. We haven't released it yet, but our Ooh. podcast is called Not Talk. All right. So not I'm not talking like you <laughs> called not talk and we we spend each podcast episode deep diving into one particular knot it's all right so, yeah it's nice to have somebody to talk about it with that's awesome yeah I you know it's funny because I I, I did these I started this yeah I, you know, primarily because nobody knows who we are I mean in the sense of not just the how to with I do that I do tutorials on my YouTube channel and and I share with people how to do specifically Senate frames and the things that I'm going through in that because each one is different and each provides its own challenge. Yeah. Um, but uh, and I think I mentioned this to you before that when you look at something and you see somebody that's of interest in any area that did something that you thought was remarkable. I always wondered to myself, I wonder what that person's like, <laughs> you know, how, the, how did they get from wherever they were before to here doing this really cool thing? So that's my whole idea behind we're not talking. And uh, with the, <clears throat> the subscript, it's not entertainment. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be somewhat entertaining, not, not just, I mean, when, when I started my channel, um, you know, I wanted to do something other than, and not, not criticizing, but just something different than simply a person's hands tying a knot and showing you how, which is important in and of itself, but to make it a little bit more of an entertaining venue than just that, fleshing it out, so to speak. Totally. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm down with that. Good for you. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> so do you, are you mostly doing commercial work now or do you do work for individuals in their homes as well? Yeah, it's about half and half. Um, half of my client base are art collectors, and I'll make work for them, usually their homes. And, you know, in the best of cases, I get to go travel to their homes and install it for them. And that's, oh. they always have really beautiful places. Um, and then the other half of my work is working on commercial spaces, hospitality, hotels, restaurants. Um, and I really love those because typically they're going to put my work in a lobby or in a large gathering area. So that means I get to go big in terms of scale. And I like going big. I prefer it. Yeah. I prefer making site-specific work that is as immersive and epic as possible. That's really cool. I'm kind of just getting started on this. Of course, until three months ago, I was working a full-time job and, uh, you know, frames take forever to make just generally, um, a hundred hours and plus. Um, and that's, wow. and that's for a fairly small thing, you know, because there's the tying of the knots, the design part for me is, uh, I know generally what it's going to look like, but not really what it's going to look like until I get the base in it on like back here. Once I get, um, the background done, then I make a determination as to the final touches of the features that I'm going to do, which might mean another two weeks. You know, depending on how much time I have to do it. Now I'm doing this full time. And um, so, but I, I've been very patient. You know, I've had plenty of people say, well, put it on Etsy. It's like, eh, people on Etsy are probably not going to spend $5,000 and up, you know, it's just, it's just not the right venue. And yeah, so I was going to ask 
ask you um, how you determine your prices for these and do you, is it going to become, is it sustainable in terms of like, you know, making a living in America and the whole thing? Well, the, that's a, a very pertinent question. Um, number one is my customer needs to be somebody uh, be, just purely due to the nature of how long it takes me to do it and that each piece is unique. It needs to be somebody that doesn't need to ask the price. Yeah, someone you know? who really values so, it, doesn't, it's not about the price. Like Serpent Sea, um, yeah. Sophie, yeah. Sophie. Yeah. we had a conversation a couple of weeks back and she said, John, there are people out there that want what you have. They don't know that it exists, but when they see it, they'll want it. And, you know, they have enough money that it's enough discretionary income that they'll just buy it. Uh, and I'm getting ready to also, in October, I'll be going to the U.S. sailboat show in Annapolis. And that's the largest sailboat show in the United States. And that's also the right venue. Good for you. You know, I'm just so glad to hear that you're valuing your work um, at, at, at what it should be valued at. I feel like you know, so often, you know, especially on Etsy, it's like a race to zero. It's a race to see like, can I be like less expensive than someone else so that I get all the customers kind of thing? Like I would never sell on Etsy for that reason. No. Like I want to encourage um, having to lower my, my or anyone else's prices. If it's art, you can charge what, what you know its value is. Right. And it, if your clients find you great and you know, if it's above their budget, well, at least you haven't devalued your work. No, and nor will I. The truth is, I, you know, I'm retired from full-time work. I don't work for someone else. I don't really need much extra money. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not panicking to sell something, nor will I ever discount this. It is art. I have a sister who's an artist and I'm again encouraging her because I've worked in sales most of my adult life. I have yeah. a pretty good understanding of these things. So if you were, you know, Jeff Bezos and you want one and you don't know me, you probably can't get one. Yeah, it's the same thing with me. Um, I, uh, there aren't that many artists making the type of like sculptural work that I do at very large scale out of knots. And in addition to that, I have originated, like the, my bodies of work, I'm assuming you'll include some yeah. photos yeah, absolutely. On this video, um, are original. You know, I'm I'm not doing your standard macrame that like five thousand other people in the world already do. All right. of my work is original. You can immediately tell that it's my voice, and that is part of what gives the work value. Absolutely, and it is. You do remarkable work, and it's it, it is standalone, uh, unique, but it's absolutely recognizable as your work once you've seen a little of it. So. Yes. But that's, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's intentional. You know, I'm very focused on making a living. You know, I am not going to retire anytime soon, and I live in the most expensive city in the country. You yeah. know, yeah. And so yeah. I'm very aware that um, making an artistic, an art life um, sustainable is, you know, a big part of my goal. Yeah. But well, you, mean... can't, you can't be afraid to ask for what oh. the, what the work's value is. Oh. You can't be you afraid can. of that. because yeah. people, anybody that has an artistic eye and just gives a, a, a couple of minutes look at what I make or you make that you make is going to say, uh, this is worth quite a bit of money. It took a long time, if nothing else. Right. But then you're looking at the skill involved and the artistic elements of it. And does it fit what I would want to have in my home? What have you? So. But yeah, I'm going to keep doing this as long as I can, because it's really what I love doing. Well, yes, likewise. So what is the, what big projects have you got coming? Well, like I mentioned, I have that 200 foot long rope wall in um, Denver. Um, let's see, what else do I have going Quick on? Question on that. So when you, when they said, we want you to do this 200 foot wall, did they just say, we want it to be a certain color, a certain theme, um, or do they say you're an artist, proceed? 
the latter. Um, so typically with big projects like that, um, they will, the designer or the architect has already done some sort of a sketch, but what they've put in the place of, they're like, we want some kind of a rope screen here. So they've just put placeholder imagery. Okay. Um, and then, and then they, and they know because they know that I'm going to suggest something based on, you know, the dimensions and the space and, um, you know, the other, whatever else they have else going on in the space, you know, that's what it means to make site specific work. I'm responding to and adding to whatever else is going on in the space. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm pretty established as an artist, I've been doing this full time for six years. Um, increasingly, clients will come to me and just say, what do you think? Whereas in the beginning, six years ago, they would be like, well, you know, we want it to be this color or this or that or kind of thing. And they were much more prescriptive about it, um, which means less freedom for me. So now mm -hmm. I get to work with almost total freedom um, in collaboration with the other professionals that are also, you know, happen to be on the project like an architect. And, and that's so fun too, because when you're working with architects or fabricators, um, all of a sudden so much more is possible, you know, like their knowledge combined with my knowledge and our skills together can make, um, you know, more than the sum of its parts. Sure. Yeah. I like to think of my work um, as my work, wa I, it walks the fine line between craft and fine art. And I'm it very is. comfortable in that sweet spot. Yeah. Um, and when I say craft, what I mean is that, um, you know, the approach of a craftsperson is to, you know, understand the materials, right? To have total fluency mm -hmm. in the materials um, and the, the tools of the work. And for me, that is not only, you know, the knots themselves, but also the line that I'm using. Yeah. Um, whatever that happens to be per project kind of thing. And so that is the approach of the craftsperson. Um, uh, 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 and, you know, the final product, we call it fine art. So I'm kind of walking that line. I mean, not everyone has the approach of a craftsperson. I just had like a, 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 a sister a visual fine artist came and vis did a studio visit with me yesterday. And she has no one material that she uses or one technique. In fact, what she does is go to residencies all the time, specifically to explore new materials and learn new techniques. And so she's kind of all over the place. And that's part of, you know, um, her, her intentional journey as an artist. Um, so I would not call her a craftsperson because yeah. her approach is not that of craft, whereas mine is and, and yours is. So, yeah. I mean, it's it, all it's a, it is a fine line. It really is. When I um, started my project, the, the Year of Knots, which was my first artwork mm -hmm. in 2016, it was like being hit by a bolt of lightning. Like the idea hit me. And in the space of seconds, I had an, an, um, an entire year's worth of knots just kind of laid itself out in front of me. I was like, I'm just going to learn one every day for a whole year. And it just, when you know, when the idea occurs to you, it's like lightning and you just know that it's right. I loved when you, uh, you, you said in your book that, um, that's now your palette. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for spending the time with me. We'll have to do it again sometime. Yeah. I mean, good luck with everything. And again, thank you so much for, for doing your part to create community with our crazy community that's all over the world and like bringing people together. It's very cool, Thanks. John. I, I appreciate it. We're having a lot of fun and look forward to having more fun. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly had a good time talking shop and getting to know Wendy a little bit. Very nice lady and quite a talent. So we'll see you again soon. I'm hoping to do uh, another couple of videos here soon. Maybe something in the form of a tutorial or showing the most recent frame I made. But thanks for tuning in. We'll see you the next time. Heading for a gig?